So let's talk a little bit about water treatment. There are solutions to some of the problems that we find in drinking water contamination and control, but water treatment is really a multi-barrier approach. So your municipality is really responsible for the first three bullet items here. They're responsible to protect the source water from contamination from wastewater or stormwater runoff, you know, making sure the source water stays protected. And then at the treatment plant, they're responsible for treating the water. And this is done through steps like um, coagulation, sedimentation, filtration, disinfection, and then they're responsible for securely delivering that water to you through the municipal distribution system. And usually they'll add a, a mild chlorine residual to help the water stay clean throughout that distribution. But what we know and what we've been talking about is we have drinking water outbreaks that still occur. The water treatment uh, system is not 100% reliable. The distribution system is vulnerable to breaks and leakages and intrusion events that can occur that would overtax the mild chlorine residual that is found in the water. So I'm a big proponent of point of use and point of entry water treatment. This is where you have a system in your home that can further treat the water and guard against any contamination that might have happened before you actually consume the water and realize some of that contamination is not the fault of the municipality or what happens in the environment or industries that are polluting the environment but some of that happens in your own premise plumbing where the water can sit stagnant and bacteria can grow what is point of use and point of entry water treatment? Well, point of use systems and point of entry systems are installed at the household level. Point of use systems are installed at the drinking water tap or at the actual shower head. And point of entry systems are treatment systems installed at the household water inlet. So outside of the house and it treats all of the water coming into the house. What are their primary effects? Well, they can remove harmful contaminants, they can soften and condition your water, and they can improve the aesthetics of your water, make your water look better, taste better, and smell better. So we call them a final barrier to consumption. They provide additional protection from what's happening in the municipality, the distribution system, or the premise plumbing before it gets to you. And so it really adds an additional standard or advanced treatment technology, adds that availability for you to utilize that for filtration of the water. And some common methodologies are reverse osmosis or carbon filters, and you can even disinfect the water at another step using commonly ozone or UV light. When we think about the evolution of waterborne disease, you know, in the early 1800s, we have these massive epidemics and uh, into the 1900s, but we had uh, the development of treatment plants during the 1900s where um, that stopped the big epidemics like cholera and dysentery. But we live today still with this endemic level of disease um, that can really have a major impact on our vulnerable populations, our immunocompromised populations, which can result in serious illness and even death in these populations. But even for people who don't die from this exposure and level of disease can experience this chronic sequela of illness that impacts our quality of life um, associated with chronic illnesses, even things like diabetes or arthritis or irritable bowel syndrome can be associated with waterborne contaminants. And there's a cost burden that we've realized associated um, with these exposures. So point of entry and point of use devices, this is where we can have some impact for reducing the endemic level of illness in our society. Point of use filter benefits have been documented through research and these some of these um, are from water quality research foundation funded studies in my laboratory if you see some of the asterisks under cost beneficial studies, but if we look at the top of this list. Uh, point of use devices have been found to reduce waterborne outbreak frequency and intensity, and so in this one study diarrheal disease was reduced by 50% with uh, households that had reverse osmosis treated tap water versus households that had no treatment at the point of use that were just consuming the tap water. And children really gain the most by having a POU system in place. Studies have shown a 17% disease reduction in children that have RO systems, and rather than uh, just drinking the tap water directly, and especially very young children, two to five years of age, they're the most immunocompromised, and we see 40% more infections from tap water. Now, a lot of these infections are mild uh, stomach ailments, stomach flu, diarrhea, but a 40% reduction in illness that this study found is very significant. 
We've also seen that POU devices significantly reduce the incidence of legionellosis from legionella exposure in hospitals, where 28% of tap water tested positive versus no samples um, testing positive with point of use devices. And point of use devices are highly cost beneficial. The study that we did that was WQRF funded found that in the US, that um, a, if everyone was if everyone was given or purchased a point of use device that would cost throughout the US about $17 billion for what we're already paying in responding to a waterborne disease burden from microbes is more like $24 billion. So it's cost beneficial to treat our water to a higher level at the point of use. And then we also had an event in Flint, Michigan with lead exposure. I think many of us have, have heard about this. It made the news quite a bit, but this was an event in 2014 where the municipal water supply uh, switched their actual source water, which was a more corrosive water, resulted in lead leaching from the distribution system and premise plumbing into the water supply. And the lead levels tested at these households range from 25 parts per billion to up to 13,000 parts per billion. And the action level for the EPA where you're supposed to treat the water to remove lead or to um, stop the corrosion, have corrosion control is 15 parts per billion. So dramatically exceeded in Flint, Michigan. And in our study, we found for that particular community at the average concentration of lead that the community was exposed to, had they had a point of use device in place for that community, they would have saved $424 million. So, POU devices are cost effective. And then they also are effective at reducing or removing emerging contaminants that are not currently being monitored for or necessarily controlled by the wastewater municipalities or that um, we're not meeting the acceptable risk standards. So things like uh, PFOS, contaminants, lead, arsenic, other endocrine disrupting compounds, adenovirus 36, that's the, the obesity virus, Legionella and cryptosporidium. So when we look at lead, you know, we've heard a lot about lead exposure since Flint. A lot of people have been monitoring lead at schools and in hospitals and finding that we're exposed to lead at very high levels throughout the United States. So this map shows areas where um, 18 million people, we believe, on community water supplies um, are on or drinking water from community water supplies that are in violation of the lead and copper rule. And you can see that map here and the darker area areas represent um, greater concentrations where the darkest areas are where a, a million people are being served in those particular regions. So regionally, some of us are being exposed to very high level of lead. Similarly, when we look at the distribution of arsenic throughout the United States, and keep in mind that there is no safe level of arsenic, but it's naturally present, so it's difficult to control from a municipal water treatment standpoint. Um, but Concentrations exceeding 10 micrograms per liter have been associated with lung and bladder cancers. And in one study where 7,000 private wells were tested, over 50% of them tested positive for arsenic. So arsenic can be a very big concern, especially for private water supplies. But point of use devices properly designed for arsenic removal can remove up to 99% of the arsenic. So looking at this question of is water in the US safe for public consumption, we've defined safe from a regulatory perspective. We've said that our acceptable risk limits are a probability of one in 10,000 infections per person per year for microbes and a probability of cancer at a level of one in a million per person in a lifetime. And when we look at is our water meeting acceptable risk standards, we don't think so. If we even look conservatively at 9 million infections occurring in a population of 319 million people in the US, we have a less than a one in 10,000 infection risk occurring, or sorry, a greater than a one in 10,000. We have about a one or a six in 100 infection risk occurring. And then when we look at cancer risks, certainly are being exceeded for certain contaminants like arsenic and lead, and in some areas where you've seen in, in the maps where um, people are much more likely to be exposed at levels higher than acceptable standards. So protection from water quality uncertainties, this is where POU and POE final barrier protections can be very beneficial, um, whether you are on a municipal or a private water source 
and aesthetically POU and POE devices can really improve the taste of your water and also um, protect you from these health threats. But what you need to make sure is that you're using a certified system. Make sure your system has a label like one of the ones listed here on the right where there's been independent verification that whatever the product is claiming to do, it's actually doing and that they're using safe materials to do it. And note what the contaminant reduction claims are. If you need a system that treats arsenic in a targeted way, then make sure that's the system you're selecting. But many systems have multiple stages of treatment and so they can treat microbes and arsenic and lead and multiple things at the same time. But it's also very important that once you install a system at the household level that you use it properly and maintain it following the manufacturer instructions. Make sure you're changing your filters at the recommended frequency and maintaining your system so it provides quality water for you.